2023 has been a year. Definitely. Would you say that 2023 has been a good year for nerds? With the exception of NVIDIA, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to find out today. We are going to do what I'm calling the 2023 nerd tier list. I went through the year, movies that came out, TV shows, and just different moments that I think are part of nerd culture. I got about 20 seven or so of these moments and we're gonna do a tier list here are the categories we'll start at the bottom what's worse than hating something is being apathetic towards it in my opinion oh yeah that did happen is the bottom category uh, the next category up is zero f's given this is gonna be the category where like we either just don't like it or really just didn't didn't care that it happened but we did remember it so that's a step up that next category up is meh take it or leave it it's a whatever the next category up there is gonna be it was cool in the moment so like it was cool but you know i'm past it i've moved on with my life uh, next one up we're starting to get to the stuff that was like pretty good this year you consider a highlight of the year it was really cool but it's probably not like sticking with you for life and then our top top tier category this was so good it makes up for everything stupid about 2020 i was just trying to be fun with it so it can just be really good it might not make up for 2020 because that was ridiculous i will be explaining each of the different moments and we will both be ranking them separately so you guys will get to see what both of us think about it and i know that i've missed things from this year so make sure you comment below and we will give you the proper rank of those things be ready to get started we're going to be going in chronological order because i think that makes the most sense in my brain back in january uh, this was a really popular show the last of us tv show the last of us for me i didn't watch because i don't have hbo and i've also never played the game but i did enjoy the means from it and pedro pascal's a, a brilliant actor in my opinion so i'm gonna say it was cool in the moment i didn't play the games i didn't watch the show it was just very much meh for me the memes were funny but also the obsession with pedro pascal actually started to get on my nerves after a little bit but next up on our list at the end of january dead space was re-released and it was seen to be one of like the things that people were really excited about in 2023 dead space was just a meh for me because like i was i was hyped about the remake but as soon as it came it kind of fell to the background so yeah, it was just a man. It was like a quick little flash in the pan. You know? uh, for me, I put it in the, oh yeah, that did happen. But to be honest, I didn't even know that this did happen. But coming up, something that I very much knew was happening and was looking forward to February of this year, Hogwarts Legacy came out. Oh, I thought you were going to say my birthday. Are you a big deal in nerd culture? I think I'm a pretty big deal. I'm going to go ahead and put Hogwarts Legacy under highlight of the year because I've always been a fan of the Harry Potter series. And that was actually a really good game, despite all the controversy that arose around it and everything like that. It was a really good game. Like I said, kind of in my introduction to it, I was looking forward to this for a very, very long time. I was so excited when it finally released. I spent probably all of February and a bit of March um, playing it. And I still actually need to finish the game. But here's my thing. I'm one of those types of people. I'm really bad at finishing games, but it does not stop me from loving and calling something one of my favorites. And for me, it totally makes up for 2020. Actually, I wish that game had come out in 2020 because I would have beat it and played it again already. You think you would have had all four houses 100% it already? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if it had come out in 2020, next up on our list, uh, the game Atomic Heart released. So February was a uh, financial burden on us because I bought the leg legacy legendary editions of both games like 200 bucks. But I'm going to label Atomic Heart as another highlight of the year because that really is a great game. It was a it was a, an amazing storyline. If you want to know more about the game, 
uh, hit our playlist button because I did a playthrough on it. I have to put that one in. It was cool in the moment. I didn't play it, but I'm glad that you really enjoyed it. End of February, though, brought us Sons of the Forest, which was highly anticipated after the original game, The Forest. So it was supposed to be a great sequel to The Forest, I think. It was a sequel. Might have been a prequel. I'm not sure. I never played either one of those games, which is why I ranked it meh. So I didn't play The Forest and I didn't play Sons of the Forest either. However, I love watching people play them and they are freaking hilarious and watching like the big head mods. It just it had me cracking up. Next up, early March, we had the Resident Evil 4 remake come out. It was cool in the moment to me. Uh, didn't actually play the game, but I played the original Resident Evil 4 and loved it. Yeah, so it was cool in the moment. Maybe we should go back and pick it up when it's on sale on Steam or something. So for that one, I'm going to put it in meh because it's just not my type of game. I'm a little bit too much of a wuss to actually play it myself. Now we're getting to the end of March and we had a movie come out, Dungeons and Dragons. So we watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie and it was... Meh. So that's where it's going to stay on my list. I put it in meh. I don't even know what happened in the movie because I fell asleep, but I am very curious to know what like D&D fans think about that movie. <sighs> Moving on, a big one this year. In early April, we had the Super Mario Brothers movie release in theaters. So the Super Mario Brothers movie is in the makes up for 2020 category for me for really just one reason. Lumily, the blue star that's trapped in the cage that delivers amazing one-liners every time. I really, really enjoyed watching it. I had low expectations going in, and Alex kind of took the words right from my mouth. I love that freaking little star, the little blue star who is just waiting around for death. That is, it's, it's me. I just kind of had to like put a random date on this one, but I would say around this time, around the end of April-ish, AI started to become very, very big and way more mainstream because they brought it onto Snapchat. They also had the Spotify AI that came out at some point this year. People using, you know, chat GPT for their homework. I put it in the mix up for 2020 just because of the potential that it has to expand everything. Um, for example, the program we're using right now, Photoshop, has integrated AI into it to where you can use generative fill. Tell it you want it to have a beach background. The integration of, of AI into programs is truly amazing, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I do like your reasoning, and I absolutely don't think that ChatGPT or any of these AI services are getting left behind from this point forward. They're definitely coming out of 2023 with us. The only reason I can't put it in the top category is because I am constantly scared. And I feel like the guy in the old joke about, uh, you know, I laughed, you laughed, and then the toaster laughed. I'm just, I'm terrified of the potential that AI has in our lives. And while, you know, these little chat GPT and the Snapchat AI might not be the ones who are going to take over the world, there are some pretty dangerous things that you need to be aware of. Um, I've seen recently that the Snapchat AI, it was telling them to go to parks down the street from them. It just scares me. So I can't put it all the way at the top, but I definitely see all of the benefits that people can get out of AI. I just think we all need to be cautious of how we move forward. But moving on, early May, we had Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 came out. Guardians 3 is going to be in highlight of the year for me because I absolutely love the Guardians series and I felt Guardians 3 was pretty good. I also put Guardians 3 into highlight of the year. I think it's amazing that the soundtracks for the movies are evolving as far as like the time period of the music along with the movies sequentially. But any movie that is going to make me want to cry over a raccoon for about an hour, I can't say that that makes up for 2020. Moving on, right after Guardians of the Galaxy, we had the release of a long-awaited sequel to the Legend of Zelda series on the Switch, which is Tears of the Kingdom. So when I first heard about Tears of the Kingdom coming out, I honestly didn't really care that much about it because I never played a Breath of the Wild. But as more information was released, I got a little bit more hype about it. Still, I didn't end up buying it for myself, but I did buy it. 
you bought it for me. Being able to craft anything and turn anything into a machine. I thought that was pretty cool. So to me, it was cool in the moment. I went ahead and put that in highlight of the year, although it kind of needs like an asterisk, with, which is highlight of the end of my year. Alex just gave it to me not too long ago. I love the Zelda series. I always will. And even if I don't even touch a game, it is still going to be highly ranked in my book. So now moving on to the end of May, we are going to remember this moment as like a turning point in nerd culture. We posted our setup tour at the end of May, and it is at this point the most watched video on our channel with I think close to 20,000 views at this point. So if it's not a huge moment in nerd history, it is in our history and I'm very proud of it. 100% makes up for 2020. It wasn't just a huge point in nerd history, it was a huge point in our YouTube career. To this day, it's still getting views and comments and people are still subscribing. It's, it's pretty cool. I think y'all know where I stand on that. Moving on, early June, a movie came out, little little movie, maybe you've heard of it, called a Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Across the Spider-Verse was a meh for me. I watched the movie. It was okay. It wasn't the best Spider-Man movie out there. This may be the moment of my cancellation, and I'm, I'm prepared for this, but I haven't watched a Spider-Man since Tobey Maguire was Spider-Man. Spider-Man's never really been my, my, my favorite. Sorry, I will accept my cancellation. A few days after that, Diablo 4 came out. I've always been a fan of the Diablo series. It was cool in the moment. I don't know if it's just because I'm not big into those types of games anymore, but I just really showed no desire to play Diablo 4. But I'm going to put it into meh because I think really most video games do something for the community as a whole. It just I didn't personally care about it. And then big Big moment. End of July, it was confirmed by the government and everything that aliens do exist. But the aliens guy is just over there like I told you, you know. Confirmation of aliens existing was just math for me. And the en entirety of the universe were the only life form out here? Come on. So yeah, it's just kind of meh. I, I already knew they were out there. I'm not naive enough to think we're the only life form in the entire universe. It was cool in the moment for me. I loved the memes for the first couple of days, but I feel like we've all moved on pretty quickly from it. I don't feel like it changed anybody's lives. The day after this whole aliens confirmed thing happened, we got a TV show based on a video game called Twisted Metal. It was cool in the moment for me because it's a season-based show. It'll be rated highlight of the year while I'm watching the season and then after the season's over. It was cool in the moment because I'm done watching it. But it's actually a really great show. Rosa Diaz from Brooklyn Nine-Nine's in it and so is Anthony Mackie. Both of them extremely talented actors. I had a lot of fun watching it and I I was actually left with like, they better make a season two. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put that in highlight of the year and we will move on to a video game that came out in early August called Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to be real with you. Baldur's Gate 3 wouldn't have made it where I ranked it until last week when we started playing it. So it makes up for 2020. Great video game. I think before I would have said Baldur's Gate 3 was kind of like a meh because we didn't get into the hype when it came out. I, I think this might be the first game in a while I'll actually finish. I'm really invested in the story. So... It moved up to highlight of the year. And we will move on to around mid-August. We had the LTT. I'm going to call it drama because some of it was drama. Some of it was serious business. I put LTT, the LTT issue, as highlight of the year pretty much for one thing. is It made Linus take a step back and evaluate how he was running things and how things were operating within Linus Media Group. And that's... Better for everybody in the tech community. I have it in, it was cool in the moment. I don't know that it, that cool is the word I would use for it, but if somebody was called out for a reason. And I think we're just keeping our eye on the situation and making sure that things actually do change for the better going forward. Next up, a little bit after that in August was new TV show, Star Wars Ahsoka. Is that how you say it? For me is going to go under the, oh yeah, that did happen. Not because I hate it, simply because I forgot about it. I'm, I'm not going to worry about feelings on this one because I know that I'm not 
alone in this. They're putting out way too much Star Wars to the point where I have stopped caring. Zero Fs given. All right. End of August, Netflix put out the One Piece live action TV show. One Piece is going to go under highlight of the year. I've never actually watched a single episode of the anime, but the live action was actually really well done. I'm going to go with it was cool in the moment. Kind of for the reason of your twist of metal, going into September, which really for us, this happened at the end of August, is Starfield, which is a brand new Bethesda game set in space. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. The Starfield release finally happened after it was pushed back three times, if I remember correctly. But for me, it was a highlight of the year. Great game. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love the game. But I've kind of stopped playing it because there's really not a whole lot that I could do now. So I'm just kind of chilling and waiting until the first DLC drops. For me, I would say Starfield is kind of in between the top two. We spent a lot of time looking forward to it. We spent a lot of time playing it. I think it was a good game. Much like Alex, I have stopped playing it and haven't really felt that like itch to get back on and play it. And Yet again, you can just put that under the list of games I did not finish. Not that it means it's not a good game. I just didn't finish it. I just don't like finishing games. And then end of September, we had the TV show Gen V in the The Boys universe. Gen V, for the same reasons as Star Wars Soka, is going to go in the, oh yeah, that that did happen. I just really had no desire to watch Gen V. I didn't see a whole lot of like trailers or promos for it or whatever. I put Gen V under meh. Once I found out about it, I was like, cool, it's it's from the boys universe. I love the boys. Maybe I'll check it out. And I still haven't to this point. Moving on, October. Another highly anticipated movie this year. It's Five Nights at Freddy's. It's going in the zero fucks given. It was a bad movie. It really was. The only redeeming quality about the movie was Matthew Lillard. I would say the redeeming quality was Matt Pat showing up in it because I thought that that was really cool. <laughs> He did so much content about Five Nights at Freddy's that it just felt right that he was in the movie. I think they should have also gotten Markiplier as well for how much he did for Five Nights at Freddy's. I fell asleep during this one. And then when I heard about what happened in the movie when I woke up the next day, I, I didn't have any want to go back and, and, and rewatch it. So zero Fs given. Early November, we had the new Call of Duty come out. Uh, Modern Warfare 3. Zero Fs given category. Don't get me wrong. I, I buy Call of Duty every year because I'm stupid. It's just the same game over and over. And the campaign on Modern Warfare 3 is just crap. It shouldn't have been released as a game. This should have been a DLC. Same category for me. I did not buy this. And I honestly don't know if I will. This might be a little bit outside, I think, of nerd culture. But end of November, we had Squid Game The Challenge come out on Netflix. Well, we binge watched, what was it, the first like six episodes or whatever that were all released at once and had to wait for for the series finale and all that stuff to happen. Definitely going to go in highlight of the year. It was it was actually a really good adaptation because obviously for legal purposes, they can't kill contestants. I have filled up my highlights of the year section. So I guess 2023 was not that bad of a year, but I also put it in highlight of the year. It was a lot of fun watching it. I had missed out on watching Squid Game when it was popular. So I ended up going back and watching the original Squid Game show. And then moving on, just a couple of weeks ago, mid-December, we had the new movie, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes release. So the new Hunger Games movie is going to go under, oh yeah, that did happen. Because I didn't even know about it until my boss walked into work one day and was like, yeah, just don't waste your money on it. I'm also putting it into that category. I don't hate The Hunger Games series or franchise or whatever, but I've always kind of had a little bit of a disdain for it because I feel like they ripped off of Battle Royale, which is like one of my favorite movies of all time. But yeah, sorry guys, I'm not really a Hunger Games fan. Uh, and the last moment, last big moment of this year, uh, the GTA 6 trailer coming out, breaking records, and yet again, people trying to cancel GTA. <laughs> GTA 6 is going to go under the zero Fs given. 
GTA 5 came out over 10 years ago now. From my understanding, there's really not a whole lot different between 5 and 6. GTA 5 was novel when it came out, and uh, I don't know how it's retained so many fans this far in. Uh, it's kind of like Skyrim in that sense. The trailer looked really good. It did. And then at the very end, you're going to say, hey, the game comes out in 2025. GTA 6 trailer has gotten a meh from me. I don't really care about the game. I just love that it has turned into a meme of we got such and such before GTA 6. I love anything that turns into a good meme. So it at least bumps it up to the meh category for me. So this is pretty much where I'd put everything for 2023. I don't know if this is exactly what I expected, but I, like I said, I know I forgot moments from this year. So please comment down below what we forgot and also where you would rank some of these things. Let us know how you feel about how we did uh, in the comments down below. I, I think you actually did a really good job curating this list. Well, you guys know, you know what to do. You like comment and subscribe if you are interested in seeing how we feel about games in different categories then make sure you click here for fave games fast or you could go right here and watch bunny build her new pc can we play baldur's gate now okay love you bye